Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for Children's Health in Focus. Um, this is a series of featuring conversations with experts on timely health-related topics. My name is Brandy Horton. I serve as Chief of Staff at Children's Health Fund. We started this series of Zoom briefings because the healthcare landscape is complex and constantly evolving. Uh, thank you so much, Brandy, and I appreciate you and, and the guests we have today that I'm going to uh, be asking some questions about their work and how this impacts children around the country. And today we're talking about asthma because asthma um, is something that we see a lot of throughout our national network. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. As Arturo said, I'm a native Memphian. I also grew up with asthma and grew up hoping that I would outgrow it. And then later as an adult found out that was a myth. I can still remember what it felt like as a kid to wake up in the middle of the night and not be able to breathe. Um, what I do here at La Bonner is sort of the end result of not being able to control asthma. And that is that I take care of kids who have an exacerbation that lands them in the hospital. What I do with the mobile unit is cool because it's an attempt to try and keep kids out of the hospital, to keep kids in school, and to keep them feeling better because there's significant stress associated with having a kid in the hospital and stress on the kid when they can't breathe. That's very difficult to concentrate if you can't breathe. By getting the information to families and giving them the power to control asthma because it, it can be controlled, there is no cure but it can be controlled. And I think that's a very important message and a very hopeful message. Asthma does not have to be a debilitating disease, right? You know, you, you mentioned some star athletes and I think it's important though, however, children need access uh, to healthcare that helps them and working with their families and work with the provider control that asthma. Uh, I remember when I was there uh, last fall, uh, visiting with you and, and your team and it just, you know, it's the, Team uh, was very emphatic about how this mobile clinic really helps uh, bring healthcare directly into the communities most in need and how effective that can be at the school or other community sites. AFA is devoted to reducing the burden of disease for those with asthma and allergies. And one of the ways that we do that is through advocacy. Um, and, you know, when we look at, you know, all of the contributing factors to asthma, where you live, where you work, where you go to school, um, you know, has significant impacts on, on your asthma. So your physical environment, your living environment. Um, and I think as we all know, there have been, you know, we have a history of social and structural inequity um, in this country that has led to, you know, a, a cycle of poverty, housing instability, um, a lack of access to healthcare among our, uh, you know, our low income and our uh, communities of color. You know, we do need to improve access to health care. We need to, you know, Im improve usual sources of, of care, as, you know, the Children's Health Fund is working to do. Um, but we also need to look at their, you know, having safe and healthy learning environments. So those schools where the kids are learning, you know, are they filled with molds, other asthma triggers? Are they, you know, actually safe to, to be in? Um, and then, you know, are we looking at their homes? Are there housing, you know, we need to improve housing quality. We need to, you know, combat the environmental injustices of, of where these communities and schools might be located. They might be next to polluting sources. Um, so we need to really look at air quality. <laughs> um, and then, of course, economic stability. Poverty is one of the most significant risk factors for asthma. So how can we break the cycle of poverty? How can we look at policies to help, you know, low-income families accumulate wealth? Um, so there's a number of things that we can yeah. do to, to actually start to make a change because, you know, here at APA, we're kind of sick of describing the problem. We really want to start making sure that we improve it. Many times when you visit a doctor, you get lots of information, right? And then you go home and you're like, what in the world did they say? And Children's Health Fund is on point with the new asthma guide, the new and improved revised asthma guide. It goes through what asthma is, how it affects the lungs, how the medications work and what families can do to control it. And it's, it's animated and um, the text is very easy to read because we do have literacy challenges in our communities. And it's just a nice way to get the kids involved with their own care because 
knowledge is power. And for all of us, our health challenges can be managed if we are given the right tools to manage our, our health. And so much of our income in this country is directed toward treatment once things go awry. And I really think we do need to pay more attention to prevention. Um, we spend a lot of money on, on health care. And I just really think we get more bang for our buck if we actually invest in prevention. Um, we love our mobile unit and the families like it when they see that bus roll on uh, into their neighborhood. And the, the nurses and the school administrators love that bus. When I see in that report that Black and Hispanic uh, children in this country uh, are three to four times more likely to have pollution and equity. Uh, it really tells us a lot about how we're not addressing this from the preventative end uh, and how we're not even addressing from the healthcare end, except, you know, for programs like the ones that we support that we, we do that, we need to do much more of that, but it'd be a lot easier uh, to address asthma from the pollution and environmental perspective. It's also encouraging to just see the shift toward controlling asthma. Yeah, now, when I was growing up, it was just treating the flare up or the attack, as they would call it. We want to do so much more. But of course, it's about resources. And our goal right now, we see 100,000 children a year through more than 450,000 visits per year. Our aim is to go over the next few years to 150,000 visits a year. Um, so uh, but we need, of course, resources for that. So we're working on that. We hope you'll join our next children, Children's in Focus. Uh, and that topic will be gun violence in America, advocating for systems change. And that will be held on Thursday, October 20th at noon. So we hope to see you all then. And thank you again for joining us today. We hope you have a lovely day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.